Have you ever heard of a vampire attack? And no, I'm not speaking about Dracula or Twilight or something that you need to call Buffy the Vampire Slayer for. I'm speaking about something in Web3 where one project drains liquidity or the user base from another project rather than attracting their own user base through marketing and traditional business means. So today we're going to discuss all of that, how that is happening in the NFT space and where it originated from. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. Well, a vampire attack actually comes over from DeFi. And in the summer of 2020, SushiSwap initiated the first known vampire attack. At least that's where we coined the term from. That's where it came up. This tactic has been used in the past. You could probably go all the way back to Andrew Carnegie, the Rockefellers, and Vanderbilt and see something of this nature. However, as far as what we're speaking about in Web3, this came out in the summer of 2020. And in case you're not familiar, Uniswap, Sushi Swaps, and all these swaps are all decentralized exchanges meaning that there is a pool or some sort of service that allows people to swap in cryptocurrencies. And this is not reliant on a centralized exchange such as a Binance, a Coinbase and so forth. This is a Web3 solution to that. So Uniswap was the first one to get up and running. However, in 2020, SushiSwap literally copied their code and made a few changes and then initiated the first vampire attack by taking their user base and convincing them to come over. And in order to do that, they have to give some sort of incentive. So whether in the case of SushiSwap, Sushi Swap, they were giving out a token and other benefits that allowed them to vote and so forth. But also we saw the same thing basically happen when So Rare initiated a vampire attack to steal OpenSea's customer base. Rather than going out, doing their own marketing and starting from scratch and then paving a new path, what they simply did is attack another platform and offer them a token and other benefits by switching over and coming over to the new platform. Most recently, Blur did the same basic thing by offering airdrops to active traders that are already on OpenSea. So basically, as we're seeing here, the pattern is... An existing platform has a user base, customer base that has lots of funds in it. A new one arises and the quickest way to profitability or making an impact, denting that market share, getting revenue in is to simply layer over the users from the market leader. That is what a vampire attack is. So the question is, does it work? Well, in the case of SushiSwap, they got about a billion dollars worth of funds to swap over within a week. And when Looks Rare came in, that was the first competitor that really put a huge dent into OpenSea's dominant market share. And a few months ago, you could not go onto Twitter or onto any of these podcasts, not so much on this show, but pretty much anything related to Web3 NFTs without hearing about Blur. And again, kicking OpenSea while it's down, the market is falling, and here comes Blur to take a bigger bite out of that. So initially, yes, it absolutely does work. However, long term, the longevity of this attack, well, we're going to get into that a little bit more later. But even in NFTs, we see vampire attacks in many different ways. And the first one that I really saw that really jumped out at me was a game called Pegasi when they decided to go after the Zed Run users. If you're not familiar with this, this is a NFT racing game in which these NFTs are horses, or I should say these horses are NFTs, and then they race within the game, and there's different ways. You can trade these horses, you could sell them, you could breed them, just like what you're doing in the real horse race world. And of course, there's prize money, and there's so many different ways. There's tokens that could be earned and so forth. However, when Pegasus came out in June of 2022... They initiated a vampire attack by getting people to switch over from Zed Run to Pegaxi. And yeah, that was a talk of the town, so to say, for a period of time. And a lot of people came over. They got rid of their Zed Run and started using Pegaxi, but it was short lived. If you look right now, neither platform is doing really great because, of course, crypto gaming and play to earn gaming and blockchain gaming, all that stuff really hasn't hit the mainstream yet, hasn't found its stride, its sweet spot. However, a lot of those initial users that were using either platform has fallen by the wayside, but definitely Pegasi is pretty much dead. 
But there's multiple ways a vampire attack could be initiated, and they all look pretty much the same. Whether or not there's tokens involved or something of that nature, there is certain structures that is just very obvious of it. And I'll just give you an example. Let's just say there is an NFT project called the Business Suits, right? And then, of course, after the huge initial launch of that, the success, thriving community, Twitter spaces, everything is going on, and someone decides to do a spinoff and does the business casuals. They decided to say, you know what? We're just going to do everything that they're doing, except we're going to make it a little bit less informal. And it's going to be the business casuals. They're going to launch that project rather than 10K suits. They're going to have 10K polo shirts, right? Well, the founder of the business casuals will simply say, in order to mint a business casual, you're going to have to burn one of the suits. And that will entitle you to a free benefit, whether that is a token or maybe the first 1,000 people to do it actually get their NFT for free, whatever it might be. And that's going to cause a mass influx of people to say, huh, well, Here's something that's going to be launching. This could be the next great thing. Things are slowing down a little bit over on suits. I'm not really known so well, but they're offering all these great benefits. These people came from this community. They understand what's going on in the suits. So they're going to just improve on that and do the casuals even better. So a lot of people might be enticed by this and say, you know what? I'm going to jump over. I'm going to either burn my NFT or I'm just going to do something to get one of these incentives. And that is an NFT van vampire attack. Now, the benefit of the project founder doing this is they don't have to build their own audience. They don't have to find their own customer base or anything of that nature. So it's going to be speeded up marketing. And of course, the expense of doing this, this is so much cheaper than to actually do the hard work of actually marketing a business. This is just basically stealing an exact blueprint that has already worked and then bringing that over and just going after those exact people. Not the most ethical way of doing it, but yes, it is business and nothing is stopping anyone from doing that in a free, open, enterprise, capitalistic system. And in theory, that's what Web3 is. So of course, even when you look at cryptocurrencies, a lot of them copy the codes of Bitcoin and built upon that. Litecoin is a copy of the Bitcoin code and they say that outright. He just snipped out all the unnecessary things and it was a lighter version making it a faster code but it was not built from scratch and multiple cryptocurrencies multiple coins and nft projects even codes it's recycled it's copied it's pasted and just edited for the specific need and that's the beauty and also the negative side of this open information everything's available on the blockchain environment that we're building but I think in the long run, a lot of people are going to be more rewarded because, of course, it's not about the keck. It's not about the code. That's not what the differentiating factor that's separating people. It's going to be their ability to actually run a business and serve their audience and their customers. But going back to this whole thing, it is faster. It is cheaper. But there is a negative consequence to that. It requires an appetite for war because when you do something like this, you're going to upset the existing community, the existing founders who might have a war chest much bigger than what you can actually put into it to then do counter measures and so forth. So a vampire attack really is not for the faint of heart. And if especially if it is something as big as, let's say, Basie and their community or the Lazy Lions who are extremely passionate, if you try to do something like that to them, it's not going to go so well for you. They're going to come down on you on Twitter. It's going to be just, you know, not the easiest battle. But if you're into that kind of thing and that's what you're up to, all right, whatever. But that is a major negative. And that alone might persuade a lot of people to just stay far away from that. Because nobody wants to be hated. Nobody wants to be at war at all times. But the major question is, does it work for the long run? The examples that we've seen so far, no, it has not necessarily done that. The only way this strategy can actually work for the long run is if whatever they're being offered, whatever they're brought over to is actually a much better solution. As I've said, everything up to this point has basically been a copy and a slight tweak. However, if something absolutely blows away the audience, the people that come over, those customers, and it's like, wow, I can't believe this is what's going on. Well, those people are then going to go out and they're going to recruit their friends and families and tell them to come over. Because remember, the next wave of people are not getting that vampire attack incentive. They have to come in because it is truly better. But what is to get people to switch from another platform if it is not better? They have no incentive to do that. So that's why it has to be a really good solution. Absolutely a leap forward and not just a minor incremental improvement. Like let's say it loads 
1% faster. Okay, well, is that going to get people to switch over? Probably not. And every example that I use so far, they've all lost steam after that initial hype. Most of them within weeks, but definitely within months, people stop talking about them, their volume goes down, and everything starts to level back out in favor of the market leader who might still be getting other competition from other ends, but they're the most stable ones. They're the ones who are most profitable and able to weather the storm and keep going. I can't wait to see how this is going to play out for Blur versus OpenSea because believe it or not, Blur has not launched yet. If you're following the progress, there was so much news about them. There was so much hype coming into this year. But the latest I've heard is that they're pushing for a Valentine's Day launch. We'll see how that goes. It's never a smart idea to build a business with people that are easily swayed and will just chase the next new shiny object because those are the same people that are going to go and run off and do whatever it is when the next thing comes along. But I would love to know, what are your thoughts on all of this? If you have any questions, I know I sort of breezed through it, simplified it, and what have you, but that is the general overview of a vampire attack and the take of it. It is very hard to sustain. And if it was such a great thing, every single person that was launching some sort of project or business would do the exact same thing. Obviously, there are limitations to it. But love to know, what are your thoughts? Please feel free to reach out to me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter or using the traditional boring snail mail, or I should say email. It's not really the snail mail, but all that information is in the show notes. Please feel free to check that out. But as usual, I want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. Until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.